Hi, I'm Jason Everett. I'm Kristalina. Welcome to The Pure Life. A reality show that actually has reality. Welcome to The Pure Life. Over the course of the next 13 shows, we'll be with you, taking a look at the Church's teaching on human sexuality, using the insights of Pope John Paul II, especially as they apply to young people, high school and college students. What we've done is brought about 10 teens from all over the country to help us discuss these tough issues. And why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. All right, hello, I'm Robert from San Diego. Hi, I'm Mary from Northwest Arkansas. Sandra from El Paso, Texas. I'm Mike from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm Lauren from Houston, Texas. And I think it's one thing for us as a married couple to talk to you about chastity, but I think it takes on a whole new meaning when you have people your own age as singles living it out in the real world. And one thing I like about our team is they're not just in the real world whining that it's hard to be pure. They're changing the world. They're building up a culture of life. And as these shows draw on, you're going to see exactly what I mean. The list of shows that we have for you is first, What's Love? Second, Media Lies, Power of Modesty, Pornography, Who Does It Hurt? Peer Pressure, Virginity, then starting over, religious vocation, standards, are you a date or are you a soulmate? Finding the one, tough issues like abortion, homosexuality, birth control, following the saints, and last but not least, purity is the fruit of prayer. And I want to explain the set a little bit that we've chosen. We have kind of a loft feeling because we wanted a relaxed setting. It's not going to be a series of lectures. It's going to be more of a discussion. And we have around the set, we have Pope John Paul II, the Great, over there. We have uh, Saint Gemma, who is the patron saint of those who struggle with temptations. She died at the age of 25. We also have behind me, Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, who is an Italian tournament skier and mountain climber known for his remarkable pure. And so before we get rolling, I want to begin with prayer. And I would ask that as we pray, don't sit at home or wherever and watch us pray. I would ask that you would actually join us in the prayer. So if you join us in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. John Paul the Great, pray for us. St. Gemma. Pray for us, and blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So let's get started. Take a seat, huh? Now, chastity. Pope John Paul II said the word needs to be rehabilitated. Because when you hear the word chastity, honestly, what do you think? You think, no. Well, can my girlfriend and I, no. Well, can we just, no. Well, what if we really, no, 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 just don't. Just, just be a good boy. And, you know, go to a pumpkin patch and hold hands together and play board games and be home by 7 o'clock. It just seems, honestly, like a list of miserable rules. How come God would give us all these sexual desires and then just tell us not even to think about it? So we're left wondering, why be pure? What is the point? You know, avoid disease, avoid pregnancy so I don't have a bunch of regrets. It just seems like a bunch of negatives and it doesn't appeal to us because we have been created for love. And so the fact is, we will risk getting pregnant. We'll risk getting a disease. We'll risk all of these things if it means we can just have a shot at love. And what Pope John Paul II tells us is a quote, one of my favorite ones from him, where he said, man cannot live without love. He remains a being that is incomprehensible for himself. His life is senseless if love is not revealed to him, if he does not encounter love, if he does not experience it and make it his own, if he does not participate intimately in it. This is why Christ the Redeemer fully reveals man to himself. And what he's saying here is not that man can't live without dating someone. What he's saying is that we have been made in the image and likeness of God. God is love, so we have been created for love. And one of the beauties of chastity is it's not just about waiting. You always hear, well, abstain, just say no, true love waits. And those are all great campaigns, but it sounds like a system of restraints. Is there anything positive about it? 
Pope John Paul II told us that the purpose of chastity is to free a couple from a selfish attitude of wanting to use each other's objects, thus making us capable of authentic human love. And that's the good news, that if you really want love, once you see God's plan for human sexuality, you don't want to behave and be good because you're afraid of disease, you're afraid of getting pregnant. You change your lives because you want to, because God's vision of human love is everything that the human heart longs for. But it's not enough to want this kind of love. We've got to know how to give it. So, what is love? I'm driving home from the beach the other day in San Diego, and it was a radio show. And the DJ said, you know, WKFR, call in today, what's love? And the first guy calls in and he said, oh, love is this powerful feeling. Would you see her? And the next guy called in. He said, oh, yeah, love, man. And every single guy who called in said, love is an emotion. And when she walks in the room, you just feel it. And that's the feeling of being in love. And that's fun and it's great and it's a part of love. But biologically what's happening is during that stage of infatuation, there are actually amphetamines in your brain. The amphetamine kicks up the level of the dopamine, which gives you this blissful feeling. Norepinephrine increases your adrenaline, which jacks up the level of your blood supply and your, your blood pressure. And so that gets you all excited. Now this level of infatuation in an adult will last, they say, between 18 months to four years. For an adolescent, it lasts between three and four months, and then the feeling starts to taper off. And then you have confusion. Well, where did the feeling go? And it does go away. I mean, even within marriage. Last uh, Friday is trash pickup day in San Diego. And the other day, Chris Selena says to me, Jason, you know, could you take out the trash? And when she held my arm, I wasn't like, <gasps> She touched my arm. I'm never going to wash this arm again. Oh my gosh, I love taking out the trash. No, it's not like that. When I'm away at seminars and we talk over the phone, and we don't talk till 3 o'clock in the morning, and it's not like, you know, you hang up. No, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. Let's hang up together. One, two, three, giggle, giggle. You know, I can't hang up. No, no. I mean, I'm more likely to get hung up on than I am for this scenario to take place. And when the feelings taper off, you hear people say things like, I love you, I'm just not in love with you anymore. Well, if that's your attitude, then you were never in love with me to begin with. You were in love with the feeling of being in love. And I know, you know people who can't seem to make a relationship last more than three or four months. The feelings taper off and they bail out. Now, Pope John Paul II, in a book he wrote before he became our Holy Father, is called Love and Responsibility. And he explains here what's going on. And this is a long quote, but this is gold, so stay with me. He says, The essential reason for choosing a person must be personal, not merely sexual. Life will determine the value of a choice and the value and true magnitude of love. It is put to the test most severely when the sensual and emotional reactions themselves grow weaker and sexual values as such lose their effect. Nothing then remains except the value of the person and the inner truth of the love of those connected comes to life. If their love is a true gift of self so that they belong to each other, it will not only survive but grow stronger and sink deeper roots. Whereas if it was never more than just a synchronization of sensual and emotional experiences, it lose its reason for existence and the people involved will find themselves in a vacuum, which means an empty space, not a vacuum cleaner. And he says, but we must never forget that only when love between human beings is put to the test can its true value be seen. And so the fading of emotions is a true test of love. And if the couple gets past that, a more beautiful and powerful form of love begins to take its place. And so you may wonder, well, okay, well, you've really just told us what love isn't. You know, love is not simply a feeling, but what is love? Pope John Paul II gave us the best definition of love ever. He said, For love is not merely a feeling. It is an act of the will that consists of preferring in a constant manner the good of others to the good of oneself. In other words, talk is cheap. And you know it. But how do you know when a guy says, oh, I love you, you mean the world to me? How do you know he's telling the real, th real thing? How, know, how do you know he's not just trying to say this to you so he'll get something from you? When it's real love, the person not only wants what's best for you, they know what's best for you, and they do what's best for you. An example of this could be a few years ago, I remember hearing, I believe it was an NFL franchise, I'm not sure which one, had teamed up with whatever state organization was in charge of making sure the dads were paying for the child support when they came from divorced families. And apparently what they did is they checked the database of the season ticket holders for that team and contrasted it with a list of deadbeat dads who weren't paying for their kids' child support. And what they found